Now let's focus on Israel because Qatar says Israel and Hamas have agreed to extend their truce for two days to allow for the release of more hostages and prisoners. Bloomberg's Kaylee Lyons is tracking the developments for us. Kaylee, what do we know? Well, Danny, this four-day truce that began on Friday was slated to end early hours tomorrow morning local time. And now Qatar and Hamas are saying it's been extended for two days. Hamas actually said in a statement that they reached an agreement to extend the temporary humanitarian ceasefire for an additional two days under the same conditions as the previous ceasefire. Now, we haven't gotten confirmation yet from the Israeli foreign ministry or from the White House. But, of course, Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, spoke to Biden over this weekend and said that a ceasefire fire could be extended in exchange for the release of 10 hostages uh, per day. It seems that that agreement has been made for another two-day period of time, but as we know, it, it will be contingent on Hamas actually being able to get together enough hostages uh, to actually deliver to Israel, keeping in mind that it is not Hamas that is holding all of these hostages. There are a number of different groups in play here, and those conditions are not just that hostages be released, but that in return Israel would release a certain number of Palestinians uh, from, from prison. So that's kind of where we stand at the moment. But again, this is something that the Biden administration had been pushing for, that this temporary ceasefire uh, would be extended for a longer period of time. Yeah, I wondered, Kaylee, the pictures are just tremendous. But um, who are the main players at this table? I mean, is it the Biden administration, Qatar, Saudi Arabia? Is it more uh, the Middle Eastern players that are really uh, driving the bus here? Who are the players at the table who are making this move forward? So Qatar has been a big mediator in this process, as has Egypt and the U.S. The Biden administration, we understand, has been heavily involved in these negotiations and in brokering the initial deal in the first place. It's not exactly clear how much leverage the U.S. is able to hold over Israel in regard to the entire uh, conflict as it is ongoing, but there are a number of intermediary players here, and we expect the U.S. will be continue, uh, continue to be involved. The thing is, though, that even as we're talking about a ceasefire, a temporary one extending for whatever period of time, again reportedly now uh, an extra two days being tacked on to what was a four-day ceasefire. Netanyahu has said repeatedly that at the end of this, the war will continue. The fighting will continue. He is going to keep going until Hamas is eliminated. So right now, the ceasefire is still very much temporary, even if it is just a little bit longer. Right. I saw a Times of London story today saying that they thought the effort could go on, the war could go on for about a year, and then even after that, perhaps it's more security measures. But what will Biden ultimately want? What sort of pressure is the White House putting on Israel Netanyahu at this moment, Kaylee? Well, it's getting much more politically difficult domestically for President Biden to manage what is a growing death toll of innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza. According to the Hamas-controlled health ministry, 15,000 Palestinians have been killed as a result of this conflict. So there is growing pressure uh, to take more humanitarian care here. There was actually a Democratic senator, Chris Murphy of Connecticut, speaking on one of the Sunday shows over the weekend that said any military aid to Israel further should be contingent on a compliance with humanitarian international law. So there's talk of more potentially strings being attached here. But of course, President Biden has said the U.S. supports Israel. He is pushing to get billion dollar, billions of dollars more in emergency funding from Congress, which is returning from their Thanksgiving break to Washington this week. That is going to be one of the many items they have to tackle. Largely, there's bipartisan support to continue to fund Israel, but attach it to Ukraine aid, which the administration wants to do, and it gets a little bit more complicated. So that's something lawmakers mm. are going to have to deal with in the near term.